There are literally thousands upon thousands of internal combustion engine vehicle fires that happen every single day around the world. They can be caused by poor vehicle maintenance, an electrical short, igniting combustible fuel, a fuel leak on a hot exhaust, design flaws or parts faults to name, but a possible few causes. Yet, when an electric car catches fire, it is almost always going to get reported by the news media. The reason? I honestly can't tell you. Either it's the novelty of an electric car catching fire, or maybe some unexplained paranoia some people have about battery fires compared to gasoline fires, or yes, most likely an ignorant person who should have the sense to know not to peddle misinf peddling misinformation. Just last weekend, the latest electric car fire hit the headlines when a Tesla Model Y was captured catching fire at an intersection, the driver trapped inside and seemingly unable to get out without smashing the glass. So, today, we thought it was a good time to bring out the old chestnut of electric car fires back into the spotlight, but this time, tackle it a little bit differently. This time we're going to focus on what we think you can see from the story that developed over the weekend and give you some very important facts that might be missed in the mainstream reporting, detail how you, as an electric car driver, can tackle the horrendous unexpected if it does happen to you, and most importantly, because it's going to be more likely than actually suffering a fire, how to deal with that friend, relative or co-worker who was very much not fully versed on EV fires. But before we do, a reminder that the videos we bring to you are made possible by people like you. By hitting subscribe and dinging the bell, as well as checking your preferences for the channel, you'll know the moment we post a new video and more views means we keep Uncle Algorithm very happy. Oh, and if you would like to support us financially from just $1 per month, stick around and I'll tell you how at the end. As I said earlier on, today's fire-related video is split up into three sections, with the first focusing on the much-shared Tesla Model Y fire. Now, sadly, I don't have permission to share the video, and so I won't, but there are a few important things to note. The first is being detailed by many news outlets as a battery fire, but because of where the flames seem to be coming from, I personally feel this feels more like a dash-related refire than a battery-related fire, namely because the smoke is coming from inside the vehicle, near the dash, not from underneath, near the battery. I am not an expert, and yes, we still do need to wait for an official fire report before we know the true cause, but I am personally going to be very surprised if this isn't a regular 12-volt electrical fire as opposed to a 400-volt traction battery nasty. So, to the matter of the driver not being able to get the doors open. All Teslas today use electrical door release buttons, as do cars from many other manufacturers. These activate a door popper to unlatch the door, and as with other manufacturers, Model 3 and Model Y, and I presume Model X and S, although I've not been in them since the redesign, feature mechanical door release buttons too. They are further down the door adjacent to the window switches. Now, I don't know if this driver knew about them, or tried them, and they didn't work, or they just didn't know about them, but if there was a 12-volt electrical fault with the car, the driver claims that the vehicle stopped and alerted them of a fault or fire before actually igniting, it's possible the door unlock buttons didn't work, but the mechanical ones should have? I also feel it's important to note that Tesla recently recalled some vehicles for overheating displays to fix via an over-the-air software update, so that may have also been the cause of the fire. But that is pure speculation, and because I don't know the whole story here, and we won't know the official cause until the official fire report is released, let's just park that one there. Second, let's talk about preventing and tackling fires if the horrendous was to happen, and you were to get a fire in your EV. Like any car, electric vehicles can suffer 12-volt electrical failures that can lead to an ignition point, which in turn can lead to a fire, or they can suffer a fire within their battery pack. While we can't do much about that latter, 
other than making sure we don't do anything that could cause puncture or blunt trauma to the battery pack, usually under the vehicle, we can definitely do our best to make sure that 12 volt electrical fires don't cause problems. And that's best done with a regular inspection of your vehicle. You see, many 12 volt fires start after rodent damage, regardless of what the vehicle is being powered by. And modern electric car and internal combustion engine car wiring looms are often made with materials that rodents find irresistible, like soy coating. And what's worse, electric cars have nice warm places above their chargers and power electronics that mice and other rodents just love to make nests in. So even if you don't have to lift the bonnet regularly to check the oil level as you might an internal combustion engine car, checking under that hood regularly for signs of rodents can help ensure that nobody makes a home and chews through your car's wires, and that in of itself can then avoid any nasty surprises. But what should you do if there's a really rare occurrence of a fire taking hold in your EV? Well, obviously, if you're in the car, get out and walk away. Don't stop for belongings and make sure your fellow occupants are safely out of the vehicle and clear. And make sure that you stand a long way away from the car. Next, do not try to put the fire out. Call the emergency services in your country and let them do the hard work. Be sure to tell them it's an electric car fire, though, as electric cars require special firefighting techniques to safely extinguish their fires. Just like an internal combustion engine vehicle fire, your car can be replaced. You cannot, so leave it to the pros. What if you're charging and a fire takes hold? Well, again, make sure the building next to the car is evacuated and call the emergency services, be it 999, 911, 112, whatever. Don't try to be a hero and move the car because again, like internal combustion engine vehicle fires, battery electric vehicle fires are things you really shouldn't mess with unless you are a professional firefighter. Finally, let's deal with dealing with misinformation. As is often the case, tackling misinformation can be difficult, with plenty of online horror stories doing nothing to help you communicate the fact that battery electric vehicles are far less likely to catch fire than an internal combustion engine one. Usually, uh, we would recommend reiterating statistics, which change a little depending on whom you ask. PINFA, that's Phosphorus, Inorganic and Nitrogen Flame Retardants Association, says five electric car fires happen every billion miles travelled by an EV, versus 55 internal combustion engine vehicle fires every billion miles travelled. Tesla, meanwhile, it puts the estimate at a slightly different point. It says one fire every 205 million miles travelled, while internal combustion engine vehicle fires happen every 20 million miles or so. The NTSB, that's the National Transportation Safety Board in the US, says that electric cars in the US catch fire at a rate of 25.1 cars per 100,000 sales, while there are 1,530 internal combustion engine vehicle fires for every 100,000 vehicle sales. Plug-in hybrids, interestingly, tend to be likely to catch fire more than either of the other two groups, at least according to the NTSB, which we think is presumably because they have more complexity in them and have both a battery and an internal combustion engine that could go wrong. But of course, statistics do not always appease someone who is worried about electric vehicle fires. And so another way to deal with fear is by talking how the electric vehicle battery packs today protect themselves and you in the unlikely event of a fire. More and more automakers now use a system similar to Tesla's, which encases cells within a fire retardant material or case, or indeed filling gaps between cells with a fire protecting foam. If the worst was to happen and a battery pack was to suffer an internal short or it was punctured, foam within the battery that is reactive to heat will quickly expand in the event of a short circuit or fire, smothering the battery cell, removing oxygen and helping to minimise the risk of fire. Additionally, most electric vehicles have onboard telematics monitoring systems that will notify you of a potential issue with the battery pack long before things get dangerous. In most cases, if there's a problem with a car's battery pack, the car will actually warn the driver in advance. This 
by the way, is why you should always pull over when it's safe if you are on the road and your car suddenly displays an error relating to its battery pack or power electronics. It is just not worth it to try and limp home if there's a possibility something is wrong with your car, just as you wouldn't want to limp home in an ICE vehicle if you suddenly could smell gasoline. And the final thing to note about electric vehicle fire fears, especially from landlords, employees or other folks whose homes or businesses you're asking to plug in and charge at, well, you'd be surprised how many aren't caused by the car, but the charging equipment used with it. While there are truly terrible horror stories of cars bursting into flames while parked up and charging, the overwhelming majority of electric car fires while charging are caused when there's an electrical outlet plugged into by a portable granny charger. It's for this reason that we always recommend using a dedicated charging station above using a granny lead as dedicated charging stations are properly installed, are properly maintained and will be properly rated to take the current levels required to charge your EV. Granny leads while great in an emergency when connected to a properly wired and appropriately sized and protected power circuit, can easily overload a spur circuit or due to worn contacts inside the wall outlet, cause extra resistance within the socket, thus warming up the plug, the socket, and ultimately leading to a potential fire. And while newer, better quality ones will monitor the temperature of the plug and slow things down or stop charging if things are getting too hot, not all chargers will. So if you've got someone who is reluctant to let you plug in regularly, just suggest they work with you to get a proper charging station installed. With EV charging stations far more affordable than they once were, down as low as $300, it's not as expensive now to install a dedicated charging station as it once was. And in doing so, you'll reduce the risk of charger-related fires by a massive amount. And bonus fact, by the way, for those of you with Chevrolet Bolt EVs who may have been involved in the battery recall after several cars caught fire due to faulty battery packs, you may not know this, but GM issued little window stickers to prove that your car has a known good replacement battery fitted inside it. We have some for our cars and it should help appease all but the most ardent of fearful parking attendants. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the description. If you want a more generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, do check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give that bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Patrick Boryaski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Taza in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Danny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support by going to Ko-fi or buying a cool t-shirt like this one at our swag store. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that sharing this and interacting with the channel really does help us. I'll be back soon with more great content, but until then, keep evolving.